Ashes of Ar Ariandel? Ashes of Ariandel, the first official DLC for Dark Souls 3, allows you to travel to a new environment, the painted world of Ariandel. If the name alone didn't give it away, you access it by touching a scrap of a painting, which you are then pulled into in the exact same way that you were pulled into a certain painting in Dark Souls 1. It's got a big old rickety bridge, a bunch of peaceful and kind inhabitants, reused assets from the Priscilla Boss Arena in Dark Souls 1, and snow. A lot of snow. I like snow. It's comfy. It's cozy. I went into this DLC with reasonably high expectations simply because of its price tag. I was expecting a chunk of content on par with the original expansion of Dark Souls 1. Both Artarius of the Abyss and Ashes of Andariel debuted with a price tag of $14.99, so it would be completely reasonable and safe to assume that both contain equal amounts of content. Well, turns out that's not the case. This is my least favorite Souls DLC to date. And I say least favorite because I don't think the content here is shit. It's undoubtedly fun, but it is definitely shorter than any of the previous game's DLCs. My playthrough took about six hours, during which I explored every nook and cranny of Ariandel, helped a bunch of other people get through the content in co-op, and also died a bunch of times because I suck at video games. As for the types of enemies you'll be encountering, well, there's still a lot of hollows, but you'll also fight some wolves, some giant Nordic looking dudes, some sexy trees, a bunch of gross bird people, some weird tall people, more huge crabs, and some big ass flies. Holy shit, you fight a lot of big ass flies in this DLC. There's even a zone in this place that must have at least 30 flies in it. They're gross. I don't like them. They cause bleed. I hate this. But my main criticism with this DLC would have to be the fact that there are only two bosses. Albeit, both of these bosses were fantastic, but I just wanted to fight more. Every DLC in Dark Souls 2 had at least three bosses, even if some of them were gimmicks or just recolors of previous bosses, and Artorias of the Abyss had four bosses in total. After I beat up Super Sif, I ended up just wandering around Ariandel for a while, trying to find another place to travel to or another boss to beat up, only to end up being disappointed after I saw that there were only two bosses listed on a wiki. I found every single new item, I explored every part of the DLC, and I just couldn't find anything else to do. So I was done with the PvE content that was available, and I was ready to have a go with this brand spanking new PvP system they added. Now, I'm not that great of a PvPer. I enjoy invading people, I spend some time at the Pontiff Semicircle, and I've dabbled in some fight clubs. But I love these new undead matches, dude. So basically, you gain the ability to access undead matches after you beat up Super Sif in the DLC. He drops an item that you burn at the bonfire in Firelink Shrine, which unlocks the ability for you to queue up for PvP matches. In total, there are about eight different match types you can queue up for, which are as follows. 1v1 duels, where no Estus is allowed, you can't respawn, and then there's a 180 second time limit. When you kill your opponent, you win the match. There are two player brawls, where you're limited to one Estus use, you respawn during 180 seconds, and the player with the highest kill count at the end of the 180 seconds wins. There are also four player and six player brawls, where the same rules that are in two player brawls also apply. As well, there are 2v2 and 3v3 matches. The same rules as Brawl apply here, but there's a longer time limit, and teams are split into groups of two or three depending on which type of match you queue up for. And again, the team with the most kills at the end of the time limit wins. And finally, there are co-op brawls and team brawls, which allow you to fight against your friends or with them against another team of two or three players. This is the exact kind of PvP matchmaking system that I think Dark Souls needed since the very first installment a well thought out, structured form of PvP. The downtime between duels has been significantly reduced and it just makes PvP a heck of a lot more fun and way easier to get into. They tried to do this in Notorious of the Abyss and it sucked. They tried to do it again with Dark Souls 2 Arenas and this time they pretty much nailed it. And while I do absolutely adore this new PvP system, I do still have a couple criticisms. Right now, there's only one map you can play on. It's not a huge deal, but creating a bunch of different arenas with different pitfalls or level hazards would make PvPing in this way feel a little less monotonous. As well, I would have really loved to see another type of game mode besides just deathmatch. Imagine some kind of team VIP mode, or a random weapon roulette mode, or a mode where you could accumulate points over time by holding onto an object. It could be called something like Hold the Flame, or even the ability to add modifiers like increased movement speed or having rolling disabled during duels. But bottom line is, is this DLC worth $15 reduce? For me, it just barely scratches the mark of eh, it's alright tier DLC. 
The addition of a PvP matchmaking system is something that I feel was long overdue in the Soul series, and it makes me feel like my money was pretty well spent despite being somewhat disappointed with the PvE content. But if you're someone who plays Souls games solely for PvE content, I highly suggest you just wait to pick up this DLC during a Steam sale or when the eventual Game of the Year edition comes out. Here's hoping that the next DLC has a lot more bosses and isn't just an undead map pack.